it's not fair to leave somebody for six months with no money. You can either shine from getting people on to, into work, but that's really difficult, or you can stop the money, which is really easy. No, you can do is it? Better from suffer. Yeah, no, definitely not for. A job centre plus advisor has revealed to the Guardian the growing pressure to stop people's benefits, leading to vulnerable claimants being set up so their benefits get cut off or sanctioned, as it's known. Suddenly, in your job, you're not looking for somebody to help them into sustainable employment, which is what you're employed to do. You are suddenly looking for ways to trick your customers into be into not looking for work. And you can come up with many ways. I've seen dyslexic customers given written job searches, and when they don't produce them, what a surprise, they're sanctioned. It's just, it just becomes a culture of let's hit the target. And it's, nobody seems to think about the personal effect it has on people. It's always about the target. They don't care how you achieve it. They don't care who you start. The whistleblower, Kay, said advisors in his office have a target of three claimants a week to refer for sanctions to a decision maker who rules on the case. A sanction may then be applied from one week to six months. During this time, job seeker's allowance is cut off and a claimant has to apply for hardship payments, usually half the normal amount. Clients may be sanctioned, or DMA'd as it's also known, for not trying hard enough to get a job or for a refusal of employment. Refusal of employment, according to the guidance on the job centre system, is when they turn down a job. But the way they're using it at the moment is if you don't apply for a job, suddenly that's a six month sanction. And the other one of actively seeking employment is generally if you feel they're not looking for work or not trying hard enough. And this is just generally used a number of ways just to basically trick them up. Wigan's Citizens Advice Bureau told me large numbers of their clients were reporting having their benefits cut. Although Wigan is not where the whistleblower is from. You do something slightly wrong, you get, you get sanctioned and it's horrible. They think you're not trying hard enough, they're not going to... I'm going to give you your money, are they? I hadn't so, well, gone to a back to work session and I told them that I was ill uh, and they were just saying like that they can't do nothing. I didn't apply for two jobs because I'd already been offered a job. What, so they sanctioned you on your next claim? Yeah, from, from the last one. It is troubling times for people at job centres. Can't find no jobs anywhere around here. It's just dead. And these just like to mess you around because they can when you haven't got a job. I just felt like like I've been attacked for no reason. I met John, who told me a fire alarm went off during a job centre interview. His advisor said they would send application forms through the post, which came too late for the deadline for three jobs. I left for the two came out to the door and rung them up straight away. They just basically stopped my money, and I didn't know anything about it until I actually checked my bank. I rung up to find out why I'd not received my money, and they said I'd been sanctioned until the end of May, from February. It's outrageous, the length of the sanction. It's completely and utterly unfair. It's not fair to leave somebody six months with no money. I've actually lost a lot of weight because of the amount, the amount I'm actually eating. I've been thrown out of my, my parents' address. I'm living with a friend, I'm actually sleeping on the couch. I don't have anywhere else to go. Back from the streets. John turned to his local Citizens Advice Bureau, who helped him with food parcels and to appeal the decision. Citizens Advice have reported a significant rise across the country in similar cases. In general, um, a caseload for a caseworker at Citizens Advice used to be between 80 and 100 clients for a full-time worker. Now I'm a full-time worker and my caseload, as well as my other colleague, Diane, who's a full-time worker, his caseload's bordering 160 clients. Andy Robertson spent eight years working at a job centre before joining Citizens Advice. This is today's post that's just come in for one day, which is all linked with the cases. So in this one being medical evidence, come back from a consultant which needs review to see if it'll help with the client's grounds for appeal. With sanctions, what's happening at the moment um, is possibly the worst thing I've ever seen with regards to practice from the Department of Work and Pensions. I mean, the amount of people that this is actually affecting and how many lives it's actually affecting. This seems to have gone up two, three hundred percent in the last six months. 
and clients seem to be getting sanctioned on the job seekers allowance now for next to nothing. It's been the biggest fundamental change I've seen in working and benefits in the last 12 years and an increased workload and increased distress of clients and advisors who more seem like robots as opposed to being human beings. Kay says this is because of the target culture which leads to competition between colleagues and offices. Well my particular team has a board that has what they may have done each week and how are you doing against the other people on your team? And then they look at office versus office. And then it goes to area versus area. And it just all seems to be, let's try and move up these tables that mean nothing, really, in the sense of actually improving the situation of unemployment in Britain. It's just done mainly, almost quite vindictively, and we don't even save real money. The Department for Work and Pensions denies that they give targets to job centres or to regional offices. But national statistics show a significant rise in the numbers of people being sanctioned in the last year. Saving the public purse is always the phrase used in our office. It's drummed home all the time. Oh, you're doing a good job, you're saving the public purse. It's an explanation. Make, feel good about stopping someone's money. you just saved your own pocket. Hiya, I'm ringing up regarding a client's job seekers allowance sanction now she'll receive. There is also evidence that vulnerable people are being caught by the harsher regime. A lot of clients who uh, have severe mental health problems, this seems to be affecting. It's also affecting clients who have reading and writing difficulties, people who are dyslexic. Um, who have work capabilities and capabilities in many different types of fields but who are unable to fill in application forms themselves. Yeah. Advisors were previously exercising their discretion. They were more on a human level where they could actually see a client face to face and know what their limitations actually were. Now that human relation client advisor balance doesn't seem to exist anymore. Now it's, it's more so that, right, if you don't apply for the job, you are getting sanctioned. Oh, it totally gets the wrong people. It, it, it leads, but it's the target that leads you to this. It leads you to setting up those who are easy, those who aren't going to kick off with you, those who really don't understand what's going on, those who, quite honestly, are just completely, to be honest with you, gullible to the, the person who's helping them when really they're looking to set them up. Young often fall into it because they just haven't been there long enough. The uneducated are generally another major target. While they may not be a person with a disability, they have seriously low educational standards and it's easy to exploit them. And You've, you very rarely see the hardcore ever taken because they know all the forms, they know it better than most at staff, the system. Some people think that you've got to be strict on benefits because there are people that are work shy and won't apply. Do you think that applies to you? I'd actually do anything to get off the door because it's horrible. It seems completely like they're just targeting my people that are actually looking for work. What's it done for your kind of job searching situation? Uh, completely hindered it because it's actually left me in a state of depression. I've lost weight and I'm tired. You know, if you fall on hard times, this is supposed to be the place where you go for help, where somebody gives you some guidance. Most people hate the target. They don't like doing it. They feel guilty afterwards doing it. You can see staff switching customers with another staff member so they don't have to see somebody they've DMA'd the previous week because they just can't face it. I had a customer who came to me after I'd DMA'd him and he'd been basically beaten up because he couldn't pay somebody. And I couldn't actually imagine it. The feeling was, I just felt absolutely terrible. And I didn't re, uh, and yeah, he hadn't done the job search that he should have done properly. Fair enough, but it, it still didn't make you, it still weren't right, you know. I can't claim that that was the right decision to make and that, what I did benefited anybody. Quite honestly, I try not to think about the other effects because it's the only way you get through it. The DWP statistics also reveal that areas with high unemployment, like the North West and the North East, tend to have harsher referral regimes. The stricter application of sanctions also coincides with cuts to job centre staff and provision. I went to the job centre and asked them if I could like, do a course and care 
because I want to be like a like a co-worker for the elderly. Halfway through the course, you need a CRB check because you need to do uh, you need to do a placement in the coat home. The job centre assured, assured me that I could be funded for a CRB check, but uh, when it came down to it, I, I definitely needed the CRB check there and then. They said I, I can't be funded for it. I had to leave my course. I had a, a job waiting for me at the end of the end of the course, but I felt like I, they got my hopes up and then just like smashed them down again. From April, we offer no provision in our office. What do you mean by that? No. We, nothing. No training course, nothing. The funding ends at the end of March. We're trying to get everybody onto a course at the moment. Those of you who still care, we're trying to get as many people onto courses as possible. Because in April we know there's no funding. At all. Because there are only two targets now. You can either shine from getting people on to, into work, but that's really difficult. Or you can stop the money, which is really easy, because you can introduce a system to do it. Why do you think people aren't speaking out about this? Fear of the job. The fact that they'll probably get sacked. And they don't want to join the people they're signing.